All right, drifters, welcome back. Uh, it's another day, but today what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to go from a two-piece drive shaft to a one, and we're gonna show you how to do it. So we're gonna take it from that crappy carrier bearing and put it into a one piece. It's pretty simple. I'll show you the install, what you need to do. In a previous video, I showed you guys the shop that I went to and got this from. Um, if you guys wanna check that, I'll put it up here in the corner. Um, that way you guys can kinda see what the shop's like, but got good things to say about them. But let's get on with this installation and go to the first step. All right, so first step, don't forget to chalk your wheels. You don't want this thing rolling over on you. And we'll put that one right there. Boom. All right. Okay, so I had to turn the truck around because uh, I wasn't thinking the transfer case is like this. We're gonna drain the fluid if we were like this. Okay. We're not we're not gonna get all the fluid. So we flipped it around and we're gonna go drain the transfer case, step two. So now we're underneath the uh, Silverada and we gotta drain the transfer case. So we're gonna unbolt this bolt right here, drain out the oil and hope it doesn't get all over our driveway. We got a drip pan under here, underneath our, um, what is the name Transfer of that? case? No, not the trans, the, whatever this is, you know. Oil catcher majigger. A drain pan. No, the drain pan, isn't that the thing on the bottom? And they're both no, drip drained. pan. Drip pan, drip. drain pan. There yeah. we go. Either way. Glad we got that all cleared up. Anyways, we're about to drain the transfer case. Yep. And then uh, it's an 18, 18 millimeter. Yeah. Okay, guys, so when you're taking this thing off, don't worry too much about it, but when you put it on, you got to be careful not to overdo it. Yeah, I'm going to do that. I'll put it back once you loosen it. Because if you overdo it, you might crack the housing. It's loosening. It's just really... There. there you go. You ready? This is gonna be terrible. Okay, here we go. Oh. Okay. Oh, Actually, that's transmission fluid. Well, they put the right stuff in there, and it didn't go everywhere like I thought it would. Yeah, we thought it was gonna hit this cross member, but I guess the Chevy engineers actually popped this one through. Yeah. It's good because I needed to do this. Look at the color of that. That's like. That's a weird color. It's like almost like a burgundy. <laughs> <laughs> it's the wrong color. I hate it when the wind picks up and it's this thin of a drip. Yeah. And you just start throwing it places. I'm just gonna say that's good enough. Okay guys, so the next thing that you gotta do, step three, remove these uh, bolts up here on your carrier bearing so you can get that puppy out and then uh, we'll move on to the next step. Also be careful here because once you take these off, this thing could drop in your face. So be sure to support it. Getting close to getting that one on? Yeah. It's trying to drop in my face. This is the most like uncomfortable thing ever. Holy crap. I don't want to drop this thing in my face because this thing is not light. Alright, there we go. Look at how bad this thing was. That is insane. It was literally just riding on this. Like, that's got to be terrible for this thing. So glad that's out. We're gonna pull the slip load, slip yoke. Yeah, we're not we're not pulling it yet, but you gotta be careful because you can see how now there's some movement. It could easily come out. Um, so next step, we're gonna go down here and we're gonna do the uh, we're gonna do the four little bolts that hold the U joints on. So let's go do that. All right. Okay, guys. So remember uh, on this one, make sure that you chalked your wheels if you're on an incline. Uh, because the only thing holding this thing from rolling back when we take this out is those parking brakes, so be very careful. Also, 7 sixteenths for these four bolts. Um, and spray a little PB blaster on there. We had a little bit of difficulty getting them off, but now they're not that bad. So they come right off. So we'll finish taking this out, and then, uh, and then we're going to get the uh, other one in. So let's do it. Place That's it. a massive pumpkin. Yeah, it is. It's a big rear end. It's 11 and a half inch ring gear. Basically, it's massive. <laughs> I like I had to think for some way, so he has no idea what that means. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, like, what bolt rear end would this be equivalent to? 14. Oh my God. I believe. Because I remember people are like, four nine inch rears. Those are sweet. Yeah. 
Well, it's because it's a nine inch ringer. Uh, this is two oh, and a yeah. half inches on that. <laughs> but this will also pull down a house. Yeah. And keep on going. Oh, and it's a Chevy. Yeah, this is not a piece of shit. All the weights on this thing. It's like very hard to get these last ones. Do you need me to help? I think I got this one. Oh, there we go. This one's loose. Okay. What's great about this is that pin yoke has a balancer on it. Okay. Got that. Okay, so now this should just. Okay, there's that one. Now we're gonna set this on the ground carefully. And then I'm gonna go up there and pull that side out. Very careful. Okay. Now it should start sliding. You got it? Yep. Oh. Whoa, this is way heavier than I thought it was. All right, there we go. Got it, set that down. Sweet. And that's that. <laughs> All right. Shit. All right, so I guess now that we got that off, we'll clean that out. Uh, actually, let's just spray it right now. Spray it out a little bit. Clean itself, get rid of any rust. Whee! Okay. The next thing is we gotta cut this plate out. So we're gonna figure out a way to get an angle grinder in here. If I had a Dremel, I'd use that so I could get in this little corner. So this might take a bit. Because <coughs> you wanna cut this square bracket, but not the tubing. You need this tubing, but this you don't. So this is what we're cutting out. We'll do that. Let's get this thing out. Okay, guys, on this one, now we're gonna hack this sucker off. Uh, basically, just be very careful. Your gas tank's right there, so you don't want to go cutting into that. I, I don't know how you would manage that, but don't do that. So let's get to hacking this shit off. Make sure you wear some safety equipment for your eyes and your ears, because this shit's loud, and you don't want metal going into your eyes. And watch wherever the sparks are going as well on usually, your tool. Yeah, usually there's an arrow on the uh, angle grinder, and it'll tell you uh, which direction the sparks are going to go. So make sure it goes away from your face. Okay, all I'm doing is I'm cutting out little sections because it's easier to cut when you're cutting with this in straight lines than it is to try to go around this. You don't want to risk breaking the wheel. So I'm going to cut off little clips and just kind of work my way around. And I'm going to do that on both sides. Told you to walk away. That was my first and last mistake. I'm blue without your face. here so I gotta work on grinding those back I'll try to cut a little bit more get it more flush um, and then afterwards we'll just grind it and paint it just something to keep it from rusting and the reason we cut this out is why because otherwise with the bigger drive shaft when it comes through here it would hit that plate so on the plates here normally the carrier bearing would be there and it would be lower but when it's swinging and whenever your suspension travels it would hit that so if you take this off you gain all this uh, extra travel Alright, so that's thank you. Yep. Finally got that thing off. So you can see up here I cleaned it up a bit. So now there's a lot less that I gotta grind off. Um, so I'm just gonna continue grinding this till it's nice and smooth. And then we'll go and shoot it with some uh, spray paint. paint. Yeah. So let's do that. <laughs> Alright guys, so we got it ground down, now it's nice and smooth, nothing in the way, I don't have to worry about getting cut, uh, so I'm just going to spray some paint on here just to make sure this thing doesn't rust out, because, well, that wouldn't be good, so I'm going to go get some paint, spray this real quick, and then we'll move on to uh, the next step. Looks guys, this is strictly to keep it from rusting. Not for looks. Good enough. 
let that dry a minute, and then we'll uh, do the next thing. Actually, we can do the other thing while it's drying. The seal? So the seal's next. So we're gonna do this seal right here. Let me go get it. All right, guys, so you're gonna need this seal. Can you see that number? Yes. Okay, so you're gonna need this seal. Uh, I'll put a link for it. And what we're doing is removing this seal here. I got this tool here. Um, basically, it's just an O-ring puller. Um, and we're just gonna reach in there and pop this sucker out. Oh, hey, there we go. Oh, got it. Oh, it's leaking behind your head. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Yeah. Yep. Yep. Oh, there you go. Fuck. That hurt my hand. Was it recording? Yeah. Okay, cool. Wow, that thing was a bitch. Alright, so now we're going to take our seal. You want to make sure the boot's facing out. Um, and then this part goes inside. You want to go flat. Now, usually you're going to have to drive this on. Um, I'm going to use a block of wood and a hammer. Um, and what you can do is if you have a hole saw big enough you can drill a hole that way this can set right over it but uh, honestly I'm just going to do it a different way and I'll show you. So first try to get it on there as center as you can and it might be uh, kind of tight and you, you might just have to tap it. Alright so now I'm just going to line the wood on there and tap tap tap. Nice and light. We're just going to work it in there from the different corners. And that is on. Alright guys, so we got the new one on there. Um, basically, all that does is, I'm just it's a maintenance thing. I'm doing it because I'm here. It's easy to do right now, I may as well. I would do the pinion, but that's a lot more work, and I couldn't find all the seals for it. So, and I just need to get this drive shaft done. So, if you have the time and the parts, do the pinion seal while you're here, because it's just easier. But, I got this one done, so now we're going to go get the other drive shaft and plop that thing in. Alright, so in here, this is the speed sensor hole. Uh, all you got to do is unclip this clip, pop that out of the way, and then take your 19 inch wrench or 19 inch your 19 millimeter wrench and loosen this out because that's where we're going to fill from um and we're going to be putting 5w30 uh oil in there but we're going to do that after we get the uh drive shaft in here because otherwise we fill this up and it's just going to come puking right out so let's get the drive shaft in here all right so i got a dollar for this grease and all i'm doing is lubing up these splines in here let's see them splines so all I'm doing is taking this sucker in here, just putting lube in there to help make sure it's all nice and lubed up just a bit. Um, and then this will spread to the other one, so it'll be fine once we get it on there. You get some on the outside as well? I don't know if we're supposed to, but I'm doing <laughs> it. Um, just a very light coat. Just to make it easier to get If anything, I'll just keep it. It's not going to hurt it. Good. All right, there we go. Now it's ready to go in. Now it's ready to go in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can feel it. <laughs> like you are laying next to it, and you are like dwarfed by it. I think it's, it's taller than me. Should be 75 inches. Well, 75 plus the. Um, it's like 75 and 16, and then this adds. It's like the size of a dork. <laughs> oh, my hand is killing me. Okay, so now... In the most literal sense. We're just going to shove this on here carefully. Line up the splines as best we can. And put it in there. Ha! <laughs> it's on. That was so satisfying. Okay. So we'll set this down carefully. So while that sits there, I'm gonna go down to the other end and uh, put the straps and the U-joint back on. All right. 
So did you get this custom made? You got this custom made, but did they not sell a One Piece just as it was? Uh, no. Typically, well, some of the Chevys came with a One Piece, but once it goes past a certain length of truck, usually because mine's a crew cab, it's got the two piece, and then some of the extended cabs do as well. Uh, but like, if you have a, a, a short bed, usually it's just a one piece. Is there a reason why they did that? I honestly have no idea why they did a two piece. It's so stupid. It's it's so dumb. Like I I, I don't even know. Um, I'm going to probably go with it's probably something to do with noise or something, which is hilarious because it makes more noise and causes more clunking and shit than what a one piece would. So, I don't know. This is... They should have done this from the factory. But, we're doing it now, so... Yeah. Alright. So, I can see that there's junk in here. I need to clean that, actually. Okay, so, guys. This part here is going to come taped up. You want to take the tape off, but be careful not to have the caps come off. Because you don't want your needle bearings going everywhere. That would be a very bad day. So, I'm going to just pop this tape off. Because these caps can come off, so you don't want that. And all we're going to do is take this, and now we can pull it to line up where we want it. Once we get it there, okay. That should be good. Okay. Because the key is, you want it to be behind this tab. You don't want to risk it popping out on you. And that tab holds it in place. So just take your... Uh, caps here, spray them off with some brake clean just to, and then just very carefully. Do we know the torque specs on these, or just? Uh, Guten tight. Alright. I love the Guten tight method. Uh, no, I'll find out, and I'll put it down in the description below. I wish I knew what these meant. A, three, is that when it was made? Like, the A stands for something, 3 o'clock, 3.20. Can someone please tell us what these mean? Now, what does that mean? I'm curious. This is like hieroglyphics. In a... It's like the Mayan calendar. I don't know. It's weird. One of those ancient civilizations. Oh my god, it's a little baby centipede. What? Where? Oh, fuck. Freaking me out over here. I was like, <laughs> what the fuck? Like, you know, those things are like really poisonous. Yeah, what do you want me to do with that guy? Just leave him. He ain't gonna hurt nobody. Not what, yet. At what least. if he crawled in your ear? Uh, I'd be upset, but not much I can do about it. Okay, guys, so now is the most annoying part of the install, and that's putting the oil in with the pump that doesn't fit in the oil. So, anyway. Uh, the idea is we're going to put three quarts of synthetic 5W30 oil on there. Um, but now I'm just going to basically start pumping and see if I can do this. Oh. <laughs> uh. Why does that color look so weird? So you can use ATF Dextron 3 or you can use 5W30 synthetic or even some people run 5w40 people run all kinds of stuff in their transfer cases <laughs> but this is what we had yeah i was i was gonna do atf but i didn't have any and i had this oil so i was like well i guess i'm gonna do some oil a majority of the guys on the forums are always like well it recommends jextron 3 but uh i've been using 5w30 for 300,000 miles and it's all good you gotta love the uh um, the automatic accent i use because that's immediately what i think of when i think of duramax owners it, it well no not that it's just it's just funny how when you go on a forum it's like everybody has their own uh, opinion and idea of what does what but there's no actual proof behind a lot of it a lot of times you'll have people on there oh that just sucks why does it suck it just does yeah. You're like, okay. Wait, can I can I have some logic and reason, please? <laughs> yeah. With a side of your opinion. Okay, so we got it filled back up. Um, now we're just uh, well, I'm gonna drain this. We're gonna put the speed sensor back on, and then after we get the speed sensor on, we'll clip it in, and uh, should be done. We're gonna go for a little test drive, see if it's ready. Yeah. All right, so we're just gonna put this back in the hole. Then we'll just clip this back down. 
I can get them on there. There we go. Boom. Now that's basically how you do a drive shaft. All right. You guys might not be able to see too well because it's kind of dark, but uh, this thing's working pretty damn good. No more clunking from a dead stop. Um, and it's not making that noise that it was making before. Can't tell because I can't get up to 45 here, but usually it would drone there. It's not doing it. Not as bad at least. Uh, but it just feels really good. It's real solid and it hasn't fallen out of the truck yet, so that's a plus. All right, guys. Well, that's how you convert your two-piece drive shaft into a one-piece. Easy as that. You go um, from two and a half inches of girth to about five. Yeah, and it's all about the girth, I'm just saying. This truck right here, actually, the whole reason we're doing all this work is because it's going to be our 2018 tow rig. So the season starts March 31st out in Lamarck, Texas. We're going to be taking this out there to tow the uh, RX-7. And then the Miata, I'm going to take Tyler's truck so that I can tow that out there as well. We're going to show up in force and we're going to have a good time. So, yep, that's that's it. So, we hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, smash that like button. If you didn't, dislike it. That's right. <laughs> and consider subscribing. If you guys want to see how the rest of this build goes, we got a lot more planned for it. It's coming down the road. If you don't like trucks, maybe you like drifting. We do that too. So, Check us out sometime, and we hope to see you guys in the next one. Stay tuned, guys. We got a lot of stuff coming, so uh, just remember. Keep drifting fun, and keep Duramaxes pulling down houses. Yes.